anyway. The book of Ezra. If you want to find it quicker, go to the Psalms and turn left. If you want to find it quicker than that, go to the table of contents, okay? <laughs> Ezra, chapter 7 and 8. As we think about Ezra here this evening. Verse 1. Then we'll jump to verse number 6. Now after these things, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra the son of Siraiah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, and the rest of them go on down. Verse 6. This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given and the king granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Note that statement. According to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Now verse 7. And there went up some of the children of Israel and of the priests and the Levites and the singers and the porters and the Nethanims unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of our Artaxerxes the king. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. Note that statement. According to the good hand of his God upon him. Now look at verse number 28. And he's telling about how the Lord's blessed him and uh, all. And hath extended, verse 28, mercy unto me before the king and his counselors. And before all the king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. Note it again. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Now, chapter 8, verse number 18. And he refers again to what is happening as he's going back to Jerusalem, involved in temple work, and returned to temple work from Babylon. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the son of Malai, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, Sherebiah with his sons and his brethren, 18, and Hashabiah and with him his sons and so on. Verse number 22. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way because we had spoken unto the king saying the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. Now verse number 31 of the same chapter. Then we departed from the river Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us. And he delivered us from the hand of the enemy as such as lay in wait by the way. I would title our thought tonight, Ezra and the hand of God. Ezra and the hand of God. Just preliminary, 50,000 people had left their homes in Babylon to return to build uh, the city and the temple in Jerusalem. They built the altar, they celebrated the feast, they laid the foundation of the temple, and opposition arose as soon as the foundation was being laid, and so the work of rebuilding was stopped. Time went by, then in just a 20, prayers were offered, and in a 24-hour period of time, 
Everything changed. They prayed for a long time, for a long time, for a long time, for a long time. Nothing happening, nothing. Enemies still, and building has ceased. All of those kind of things about the temple and all. And then all of a sudden, God did something. In short order. The first thing I think about is that what a, what a great encouragement to the people of God. You pray, you say, I've prayed and I've prayed and now years have gone by and I've prayed and I've prayed and more years have gone by and I've prayed and I've prayed. But watch out. Suddenly something could happen. Don't ever stop. Don't quit because God could all of a sudden intervene miraculously, instantaneously. All of a sudden, just here it is in a 24-hour hour period. Everything's changed. Keep that in mind. Ezra 7 is where we read, first read of Ezra. First mention. Ezra is mentioned there. And Ezra led the second return to Jerusalem, uh, which was all this time later. Chapter 1 through 6 of the book of Ezra is about Zerubbabel and his return. It's past. It's what's taken place in the past. But in the seventh chapter, we begin with Ezra there. And it's about the second return and Ezra's involvement in the rebuilding of the temple and the rebuilding work that was to take place. So we start here, the seventh chapter, about Ezra tonight. What do we know about him? Well, we're told in verse 1 through 6 that he was a priest and he was a scribe. We're told in verse 5 that you can trace his uh, ancestry all the way back to anybody know who it might be? Who? Aaron. Moses' brother. The first high priest. So he goes all the way back there. He's a priest. He's not only a priest, he's a scribe. Verse number 6 tells us. A scribe had the responsibility of copying and interpreting scriptures. And it says there that he is a ready scribe, which simply means that he's skillful. It's the word that's translated diligent. He's a diligent scribe in the scriptures about copying and interpreting scripture. He's about it. He's diligent. He's a student. He's a studier. He knows whereof he speaks. Verse 12. We read that the king, Artaxerxes, sends, can everybody say that together tonight, Artaxerxes? Artaxerxes, yeah. He, he, he sends a letter to Ezra authorizing his return to Jerusalem for the rebuild work. And he calls him Ezra the priest in the letter. Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven. He's a scribe. He's a priest. And then, most importantly, we read it six times in our opening. The hand of God was upon him. Most important, the hand of God is upon him. What, why, why is Ezra writing all of that down? And the hand of God was upon us. 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 And six times he writes it down. I'll tell you why he's writing it down. He wants us to know that it wasn't him that did all of this. It was God. And he saw every step and every stage of the journey, it was God. God did this and God did something else and God did something else. And prospered and helped and enabled them in the work. So, the only explanation for what takes place is the hand of God. Three things about the hand of God tonight, okay? Three things. First, in verse 6 of the 7th chapter, the hand of God gives us courage. Ezra went up from Babylon, a ready scribe, and were told that the king granted him all his request. 
according to the hand of the Lord, his God upon him. We're told that he went to the king. We're told in verse number 20, hmm, I can't get it. Verse, anyway, we're told that he went to the king with all of his authorities and with all of his uh, peoples and powers. And uh, uh, he, what did he do? He goes before him and asks to be able to go back to Jerusalem in captivity. Can I leave Babylon and go back and help in the build? Now, let me mention that earlier on in the second chapter, fourth chapter, I believe it is, that our tax had told them that they could not go on, that, they need, that it must stop. The work must stop. And he's decreed it. But now here he is. He's going before him and asking permission to do it. Let me tell you, that would take some courage. I've got a decree. The king says, I've got a decree. Who do you think you are? Brazenly coming in here on me. But the answer is this. The hand of the Lord our God was upon us. That was He went in and whatever he said, he spoke with the power of God touching it. Whatever he said, it had weight. And it grabbed the king's heart. <laughs> and it it and the king gave favor. He says, Oh yeah. Have at it, Ezra. <laughs> the power of God on his life gave him courage to be able to do what he did. He gives us courage. We need Holy Ghost courage tonight. In our world, there's, a, there's this effort to intimidate the people of God and keep you cowed down. Please don't say anything anywhere at the schoolhouse. Don't say anything anywhere at the workplace. Don't say anything. See, that's what they want in public life, social life. Just if you will, just shut up. Keep it to yourself. And that's not what we're about. We must have God's power if we're going to be able to have the courage that's needed to speak and to stand in a dark day. I was, verse 28, there it is, verse 28. I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. The Lord was with him and gave him what he needed. That's what we need tonight. What is it that you need courage for tonight? Hmm? Where is it? What is it that you know you need to do? What is it that you know you need to do that's going to take supernatural help and ability and enabling. What is it tonight? There's something. The hand of God can be upon you. Enabling you to do it. The hand of God gives us courage. Secondly, the hand of God moves us to serve. In chapter 7, verse number 28, we're told that, look at it with me, 728. And uh, God hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors and before all the mighty king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. He gathers people to go up with him. So I suggest this. The hand of God moves us to serve. Not only enables us with courage, but he also moves us to serve. In the 8th chapter, it's a long list of names. Families, 
who joined Ezra in the return, in the second return. And verse 15, look at the 15th verse of the 8th chapter. It says, and I gathered them together to the river that, that runneth to uh, Ahavah, and there abode me, we in a tent three days, and I viewed the people. They, he's called for them, and now he views them and counts them, and found there was how many? How many? None of the sons of Levi. Now, Levi was one of the twelve tribes of Jacob, right? And the Levites were called to full-time ministry. They were to be supported by the tithes of the ministry. They were priests who were to lead the worship. And uh, so all of the Levites had the calling of God to what we would call nowadays vocational ministry. To full-time ministry. And uh, you would think they would be very much interested in returning to the worship of God in the house of God and the service of God. And what happens? They are absent. They're not there. In Ezra 2, 50,000 people were stirred in the first return to go back with Zerubbabel. 50,000. That's one of six Jews that were in Babylon came back. So what is that? 50,000 out of 300,000 could have come back. But they didn't. Only 50,000 came back. And then out of the 50,000, we're told in the second chapter, verse 14 through 42, that only 341 people were Levites. 50,000 returned, only 341 were Levites. Out of 300,000, only 341 were Levites. Over 4,000 priests returned, but 341 were Levites. Why such a low number? Well, Deuteronomy 18.2, we'll not go there and read, but you might mark it, tells us that the Levites had no earthly inheritance. And... That, that was just the way God had set it up. The tithes will take care of you. You know, we'll tend to. But you're not going to have any house. You're not going to have any farm. You're not going to own your own business. You're, you, you, you can't have that stuff. It's, it's full-time service. That's what you're to be about. That's it. No earthly inheritance. Well, they've found themselves for decades over in Babylon. And there's no temple service taking place over there. Right? And so now, they have already purchased a plot of ground. Maybe they're farming it. Maybe they've started their own business. And now the call comes. Levites, come on back with us. We've got to get back to the house of God in the temple. And we're going to worship God. And you guys have to be the leaders. You, God's called you to be full time and all. And I can't prove it, but I suspect it. They, they said, we have to leave all of this. To go back to that. Not the worship part of it. No, no, no. But there is this material thing that's got them. No inheritance. Give up farms. Give up business. Give up house. My own house, give up, give up, give up. And so you have 341 that came the first time. And here Ezra is now, second trip. We're going second trip. And he can find, you know what? He, he said there's none, no Levites. None. They're back there established in Babylon, happy about it.
So you know what Ezra does? He sends for them. In verse number 17. He sent them with commandment in, in to Iddo, uh, unto Iddo, the chief at the place of Cassif, whatever that is. And I told them what they should say unto him and to his brethren, the Nephinims, at the place that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of God. Bring ministers, and the ministers are Levites. He calls for them. Verse 18 tells us, you know how many came? And responded to that call? Two. Only two. Verse 18. And then, they had somehow convinced 36 others to come. See, so you have a total of 38. Verse 20 tells us that 220 came for the work of the ministry. But they were Nethinims. And you know who Nethinims are? They're not Levites. They're old Gentile bunch that came in and got in and they could pack the wood, they could cut the wood, they could carry the water, they could do all kinds of stuff like that, but they weren't priests. But total, there were 220 of them. Counting the Nephinim. 38 of them were of the family of Levi who could be ministers. Only 38 came. But you know what the word is? Look at verse 18. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the son of Malai, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And then also in 19, and Hashabiah, and with him these others, but Hashabiah, and for initially two. There are two men who came, and then you had the other 36 who came along. And what was that? He gives credit to God. He said, thank God we had two. <laughs> thank God we had 38. 38 came. I know there's still about 250,000 back there. And I don't know what the Levite numbers are, but they're innumerable. But at least thank God that there were 38 who surrendered to God's call on their lives. That's what we need. We need God to move on us. The hand of God to move on us. To bring us to the place that we've got courage. To bring us to the place that we want to serve Him in His service. We need it. God prompting us. God powering us. God directing us. God moving on us. Third thing we see. The hand of God comes by learning, obeying, and teaching God's word. Look at the seventh chapter, verse number nine and ten. Midway the verse there, it said, He came to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. And then it says, for, for. You, you know what that means? Now we're given an explanation about this good favor of God, this good blessing of God that's come on him. It's for. And he connects something to that. The hand of God, the blessing of God, the favor of God for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, which is the word of God, right? And to do it. And to teach in Israel statutes and judgments and so forth. So what do we have? There's a connection between the hand of God and Learning, obeying, and teaching the Word of God. He prepared himself with the Word of God. 
to do it. He didn't only learn it and study it and assimilate it, but now he's wanting to put it into shoe leather. He's wanting to be able to walk it out. He's wanting to live it. it wants, he wants it to be the rule of life for him. And then not only that, then he wants to teach everybody else about it. You want to get in on the blessing of God? Say, Lord, here I am. I'm wanting to tell somebody. And God will get in on it with you. The sealed lip Christian, God's not flowing through you. You need to let him throw, flow through you so you can speak to the truth to folks and give them the gospel and give them help and tell them about Jesus Christ the Savior. Tell them that we're sinners and show them what God says about us and how we desperately need forgiveness and favor with God and acceptance from God. We need to tell. And when you tell, God gets in on it. He said to seek the law of God, to do it, and to teach it. The hand of God will be upon us when the word of God is in us. You say, I'd like to get full of the spirit of God. Well, do you have any interest in get full of the word of God? Yeah. And then you'll find that it will just start coming out of you. It becomes just... Just your life. Three conclusive truths. I said I had three points, but here are three more, okay? <laughs> no, conclusive truths. First, God favors those who seek Him. Look at verse 22 of the 8th chapter again. Listen to that. The hand of the Lord is upon all them that for good... That seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. God favors those who seek him. Right? He, he had gone and spoken to the king. All of that truth impacted the king. Look at the seventh chapter, verse number 21 and 23. Uh, 21, our, our tax exceeds is, is the king is writing a letter and uh, he says, uh, I do make a decree to all the treasures which are beyond the river that whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of God of heaven shall require of you, it shall be done speedily. <laughs> He's got the favor of the king as he's gone to talk to him. Now verse 23, whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. That's over in Jerusalem, not Babylon, over in Jerusalem. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? He said, the way I treat them is altogether involved in how God's going to treat us. And he's talking about the blessing of God. So, God favors those who seek Him. He does. Are you seeking Him? Oh, I did one time. <laughs> Are you seeking Him? We need to seek Him. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7 says, Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call ye upon Him while He sneer. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He's got abundant, for, abundant pardon, forgiveness, cleansing, mercies, goodness, his blessing for you. If you're seeking, if you won't, you say, oh, I'm not interested. Oh, no, it's not going to be good. God favors those who seek him. God works through faithful people. Ezra determines to go to the king. Determines to obey God. Ezra goes after the Levites. He said, you honorary dogs are just laying back here at Babylon. What's wrong with you? Well, that's Sanders' interpretation.
And so faithful people return. You know what? Uh, 50,000 returned under Zerubbabel. Less than 2,000 returned under Ezra. Less than two. There's still 250,000 back there, but 2,000 decided that. But thank God for a faithful, surrendering remnant. He's always got to. Those who will strive to be faithful to him. A faithful people. Thank God for a faithful people. God works through a faithful people. And Ezra, a 2,000 that decides to go back, 38 that decided that they're going to go and be ministers at the house of God. Whatever the rest of that 300,000 are going to do. Then thirdly, those who had gone back earlier had descendants who followed them later. If you look at the list in chapter 8 and compare it with the list in chapter 2, you'll find that relatives, largely the relatives of those who were in chapter 2, then come in chapter 8. Most of the Levites didn't. Come the first time. So most of the Levites didn't come the second time. But there were a pile of others, and if you'll look at the names and match the names, you want me to take the time to do it? You'll be all right if you say no. <laughs> but you can study it, and you'll find that the relatives came later. So what are we to do? We're to return to the Lord. We're to surrender to the Lord and His service. And just watch and see if God doesn't impact your descendants. Watch and see. It may take decades. It may not. Hopefully not. But it's our call. God's call to us. Be faithful. Stay faithful. And see what God will do. Whatever we're about, we need the Lord's hand to be upon us for good. His hand upon us. Weighty, powerful, guiding, directing, blessing, opening doors, closing doors, giving us favor with others. All of those kinds of things seen in this wonderful Ezra. Two chapters, seven and eight. Let's stand. Kenny Scott dismisses tonight, please. Lord, thank you for your good mercy and grace and your faithfulness to us.